the news this morning, Anambra Sema announced severe flooding, warns Riverline communities to prepare for evacuation. Anambra State Government inaugurates waste management committees. Federal Government flags up disbursement of grants to address the plights of the poor. As England witness high level drought as residents are asked to conserve water. Hello, beautiful morning to you and welcome to Breakfast News at 8. I am David Opopasele. Before the news in detail, here's a special message. Governor Tukuma Soluda has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra State economy and promotion of core Ibo values. Let's give him our maximum support for the tax ahead. The Anambra State Emergency Management Agency, SEMA, week-long sensitization of riverline communities in Anambra on the need to be prepared for evacuation ahead of this year's flooding as predicted by the Nigeria Meteorological Agency has ended with Idemli South and Oka North local government areas. Correspondent Emmanuel Okonkwo tells us more. The sensitization was a moment when the officials of Nigeria Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, and State Emergency Management Agency, SEMA, reminded occupants of flood-prone areas in the state of the need to strictly adhere to government directives during the predicted flooding in order to be safe. Speaking to the people, the Executive Secretary, SEMA, Chief Paul Odenigo, represented by Mr. Emeka Ezenwa, told them to be alert and to be ready to relocate to holding centers already prepared for victims of the foreseen flood disaster in the state, stressing the need for them to value their lives beyond any other thing. Chief Odenibu explained that the state government and SEMA are prepared to take appropriate actions towards ensuring the safety and well-being of displaced persons at the holding centers during the flooding. He further discouraged them from subscribing to practices that could cause flooding, such as building on waterways, dumping of refuse inside drainages, among others. All we are trying to do is to alert them, to sensitize them that they will experience flood this year and there's every need for them to save their lives by getting their properties ready, clothings, medicants and all the, they will need when they are the holding centers during the flood season so that they don't lose their lives because we are all, we are, what we are trying to do is to save lives first. Responding, the Transition Committee Chairman of Idemli South Local Government Area, Lady Amakaobi, thanked SEMA for the visit, promising to make sure that the people are well informed on the impending disaster. Lady Obi expressed hope that the state government and the agency will give victims of the disaster all necessary assistance during and after the outbreak. I'm prepared with my executive or ESCO members because we are here to serve, we are not here to lead. We are here to serve our people. And uh, my working governor is very, very interested in anything pertaining to cleaning of environments, especially paving ways for the flooding to pass. So I'm ready to work and I'm ready to give him a test needed for Anabla to succeed. According to the Nigerian Meteorological Agency's prediction, the people should be expecting deluge of flood from end of this month to September 2022. The Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, ICPC, has sought for partnership with the Anambra Broadcasting Service, ABS, to enable the commission drive the message of anti-corruption to the grassroots level. The Anambra State Resident Anti-Corruption Commissioner of the Commission, Mr. Godwin Oche, sought for the collaboration when he paid a courtesy visit to the Managing Director of Anambra Broadcasting Service, Sachido Bidegu, in his office. Correspondent Emmanuel Chiwata completes the report. She said the visit was to identify with the establishment, sensitize the populace, and to seek partnership to ensure that corruption is well tackled in the state. 
he disclosed that in the desire to drive the operation of ICPC closer to the grassroots, the board decided to open an office in Anambra to serve the people. While extolling ABS for its wide audience and global reach, Mr. Oshie said that ICPC is determined to educate and enlighten the people to make sure people stay out of corruption. The law allows us to set up um, units called anti-corruption and transparency units in all MDAs as much as possible, which will comprise of your staff uh, selected on the basis of their personal integrity um, that will be our eyes and ears in the organization. Our own staff? Yes. Okay. They will monitor and ensure that um, integrity pervades the work environment. They will liaise with us periodically and we will be interacting with them as well. If a staff member has any complaints that borders on integrity or corruption, they can handle it at the preliminary stage. If it gets to the point that we should be aware of, they get in touch with us. Uh, we can step in using different approaches. Respondent Sashido said the establishment is ever ready to collaborate with them in order to achieve Governor Suludo's vision of a smart and prosperous homeland by fighting corruption to the barest minimum. We will collaborate with you, you know, to a very, very large extent, especially at a time like this where we have a governor who has a big dream, which, you know, we are gradually, you know, beginning to realize. That is the dream of uh, building a livable, uh, prosperous, smart, clean, green and uh, secure homeland. And for us to achieve that, we need to also ensure that you know, people don't get involved, you know, into corrupt practices. So you are going to be partnering with us in achieving that dream that Mr. Governor Professor Chukuma Charles Saludo, you know, has for Anambra State. And um, I can assure you that the partnership would be a partnership that will benefit us, you know, symbiotically. Part of the visit where the senior leaders in the commission, including Mr. Nobu Ngodo Chukuma Nzebunashi and Samson Sani, presentation of instructional, educational and informational materials to the managing director featured at the event. Local Government Waste Management Committee for Anambra Central has been inaugurated. The inauguration which was conducted by the Chairman Governing Board of the Anambra State Waste Management Authority, Dr. Emezenwaji, took place at the Government House in Oka, where in Anibogo, completes the story. In attendance for the inauguration, we are members of the Governing Board of Aswama, Transition Committee Chairman for Manambra Central Senatorial District, Environmental Health Officers, a representative of the Nigerian Police, among others. In his remarks during the event, the Chairman, Governing Board of Aswama, Dr. Ezenwaj, read out the terms and conditions of the committee to include taking charge of waste management in their domains, grassroots sensitization, and ensuring that contractors in charge of waste disposals in their areas do not slack in their jobs. Nobody, you don't mean it not, nobody should be allowed to trade on top of the drain. It must be before the drain. So put their task force, remove them from that place. And anybody that has the drain in front of him feed up. They sanction him. We promised the governor that um, yeah. we will take waste management to the communities, um, the wards and the communities. And um, our mayors will hold in high esteem. You know, just like I was telling uh, my brother from uh, Okanaut, that Okanaut, with all the land they have there, must have a dumping site. All this while. Still refuse are scattered all over the place. Uh, it's not easy, but all human beings are here for this. 
I urge you, I plead with you, in the name of God. Because you are nearer than than he is. Take charge. I think we're a strong relationship between how clean our environment today. Now the number of deaths we see around us, the number of people that die around our environment, the number of people that go to hospital to be treated of one infection or the other. And so if we all contribute our best in making sure that the environment is clean, everybody will be healthier and will be better for it. And when you are healthier, you are able to produce the productive capacity of the society will increase. Responding on behalf of the newly inaugurated committee, the TC chairman of Injikoka and Oka South Council areas, Mr. Clems Agui and Mr. Thank God and Ago appreciated the board for the charge given to them and promised that they will work to the best of their abilities to ensure that Governor Chuku Masoludo's vision of clean, livable and prosperous Anambra State is achieved. Others who spoke during the event include a member of the board, Chief Emeka Agasili, a community-based organization member, Dr. Dennis Eke Mezie, Mr. Chris Azor, among others. The official inauguration of the committee formed the high point of the occasion. Queen Anibogu, ABS News. I call car market in Oka South local government area of Anambra State for several years has been known as the headquarters of traffic jam in the state. When Anibogu visited the market again and now tells us what the market looks like at the moment. The reason used to be a nightmare, better imagined than experienced, because of the ways traders leave their shops, displaying their wares on the road, and tricycles, shuttle buses, and other vehicles picking up and dropping their passengers indiscriminately for lack of designated motor parks for such activities. But months after taking up the mantle of leadership as the governor of Anambra State, Professor Chuku Masoludo gave a directive through the Ministry of Trade, Commerce and Industry for the conduction of markets in the state, of which a Koka market is among. For the past two weeks now, anyone passing through the market will testify of the impact of that directive on a Koka market. As there is now a free flow of traffic, traders no longer display their goods on the road, and there is also parks and there are also parts for vehicles. On daily basis, operatives of Ocha Brigade, Blue Shield Security Outfit, Atma, and Ekoka Market Task Force are seen enforcing orderliness in the market. Some people who spoke to the area, Brother Joseph Iboka, Mr. Silvanus Emeka, Mrs. Ugochuku Okeke, and Ms. Oluchuku Mweke, expressed their delight at the new look of the market. They also mentioned some areas that need improvement. <laughs> Every second Thursday of the month, on a get up reach it. In I want a shop name it shall. On a one boy, I wad ya for the mebetcher shop, nay liar, and a zoo tanele. I am with Poche, but I get the winner in Nepoche, which has shiny or the money. So, you know, we can carry a magazine or a bad day or a good daughter, and why is what we can over nine? I try. Hold up, Nakale Nuso. He be a manga wizzy who goes there for the Gaumia Boka de Le Mutu. When I get everywhere, they love me freely. Moto Kekena got freely, Okuna Gapu. So, I like him while it's a cock at the Kita. For the chief of staff to the chairman of the market, Sir Charles Anerobi, the secret behind the new scenes at the market is Governor Soludo's directive that prompted the market leadership to bring in some level of ventilation to the market. He also suggested that if government will ask the enforcement agencies to stay up to 7 p.m. every day, the free flow of traffic will be maintained. Those petty traders trading along the road, they are the people causing the traffic jam. Now, there is a directive that governors have given last two weeks that all those petty traders along the road, there will be no more street trading anymore. So we shift them inside the market. So let there be traffic flow. Queen Anibogo, ABS News.
On the national scene, the federal government has flagged off the disbursement of grant for vulnerable groups, GVJ, with 4,537 vulnerable residents benefiting in Jigawa. The Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Hajia Sadia Omar Farouk, who inaugurated the program in Dots, expressed her appreciation to President Muhammad Buhari for his vision to lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty by 2030. Omar Farouk stated that since the inception of the Buhari administration in 2015, when it inherited a national poverty incidence level averaging 70%, the federal government has paid more attention to generating solutions to address the plight of the poor and vulnerable despite other economic challenges it inherited. She explained that the development informed the decision to initiate the National Social Investment Program, NSIP, as a strategy for poverty reduction and enhancing social inclusion among Nigerians, especially women in rural areas. The minister said that the NSIP has been acclaimed by many to be the largest and most ambitious social protection program in Africa. Nigeria's oil production remained stable in the last three months, albeit low, going by its recount and production volume as reported by the latest data from the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC. Besides the cartel, besides, the cartel has reduced its global demand growth forecast for this year to 3.1 milliliter barrels per day, down by 300,000 barrels per day for its previous month estimate, given expectations of a resurgence of COVID-19 restrictions and ongoing political uncertainties in the second half of 2022. According to OPEC, Nigeria's production based on secondary sources went up marginally to 1.18 million barrels a day in July from 1.17 million, million barrels per day in June, just at its as its recount remained unchanged at 11 for the two months. Nigeria's oil production crashed by about 14.94 million barrels in the second quarter of this year, an indication that the, that the country's oil earnings plunged by about 703.76 billion naira, being the worth of the crude that was lost during the review period. The federal government, as well as operators in the oil sector, has repeatedly decried the, decried the plunge in Nigeria's oil production, attributing the decline to acts of vandalism by oil thieves. Large quarts of England have officially descended into drought. Authorities announced yesterday urging residents and businesses in affected areas to conserve water in the driest summer in 50 years. The Environment Agency announced that England's southwest and southeast are in drought along with central and eastern regions after convening the National Drought Group made up of water companies, ministers and other water authorities. Parts of the capital, London, are also affected. The UK has had five consecutive months of low average rainfall and back-to-back -back heat waves with temperatures expected to peak on to peak today as high as 37 Celsius, that is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit in some parts. Only two months since the start of 2021 have seen at least average rainfall. Southern England just received 17% of its average rainfall in July, according to the UK Met Office, while the lack of rain and heat are driving this drought, around 3.1 billion liters of water are lost every day in England and Wales through leaks in the nation's aging infrastructure. Consumer groups and experts have called on water companies to do more to plug leaks. Nigeria's karate team has become the third overall best team at the just concluded 19th Union of Africa Karate Federation's Western African Championships, which was held in Wagodugu, Burkina Faso. The Nigerian karate the karate cars participated only in the women event in the senior category, which held from August 2 to 7. Karate Federation of, the, of Nigeria KFN President Silas Agara, who confirmed the results, said the six-day tournament was a developmental program aimed at preparing the country's karate cars for future competitions. 
He revealed that in preparation for the tournament, the Nigerian team camped at the National Institute for Sports in Lagos from July 27 to August 1. Host Burkina Faso topped the medals table with 14 gold, 14 silver and 35 bronze, while Cote d'Ivoire finished second with 12 gold, 12 silver and 14 bronze medals. Both countries competed in all the categories including cadet, junior and senior events, while Nigeria only took part in the senior event of the women category and completely dominated the event. Countries that participated in the championships were Ghana, Togo, Benin Republic, Niger, Burkina Faso, Côte d'Ivoire, Liberia, Nigeria, Mali, Gambia, Sierra Leone, Mali, and Guinea. And that's the news this morning. Thanks for joining us. Remember, you can follow news and programs on ABS from any part of the world by liking our Facebook page at ABS Radio Television. Subscribe to our YouTube at youtube.com slash ABS Television. Okay. You can follow us on Instagram at ABS Radio TV or on Twitter at ABS Radio TV. Also log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com for stories, programs and video contents. Now the main points again before we go. We told you that the Alhambra State Emergency Management Agency has announced severe flooding warns of riverine communities to prepare for evacuation. Alhambra State Government has inaugurated Waste Management Committee. We also told you that the federal government has flagged off a disbursement of grants to address the plight of the poor. England is witnessing high-level drought as residents are asked to conserve water. Before we go, here is a special message again. Governor Tuku Masoluda has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra State economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's continue to give him maximum support for the tax ahead. I am David Okwakwasele. Thank you for joining us on the news this morning. The Gwensha continues right after now. Stay with us. <laughs>